Hawaii. Yes, it's part of the United States, but it feels worlds apart from anywhere else in the country. An impossibly beautiful string of volcanic islands in the North Pacific. Every time I visit Hawaii, I make a promise to myself that I will live here someday. Aptly named The Gathering Place, the island of Oahu is Hawaii's most populous and developed island. My mother grew up here, and I spent every summer of my childhood here, so I feel like I know this island like the back of my hand, if my hand were one of the most beautiful places on Earth, which it isn't. So come with me as I show you the best beaches, best island grub, local secrets, advice on avoiding the crowds, money-saving tips, and more. Tip number one, beaches. If you're like most people, this is why you come to Hawaii. And while you may think Oahu is only about crowds, Honolulu traffic, and shopping, it is home to some of Hawaii's most beautiful beaches. First up, my favorite beach on the island. On the rugged, majestic eastern coast of Oahu, also known as the Windward Side, lies Waimanalo Beach Park. Far from the madding crowd of Waikiki, this beach offers miles of white sand, turquoise waters, and calm enough waves year-round to relax and enjoy the refreshing North Pacific. The best part about this beach? No crowds. Compared to Waikiki, it's practically empty. Bit of a warning, if you see signs warning against jellyfish, take them seriously. Now, the signs don't actually mean that there are jellyfish present in the water that day, so the best way to check is just inspect the beach. If you see lots of little bubble things with long bluish purplish tails, stay the hell out of the water. These are called Portuguese man of war, and they will f you up. If you ignore this and do go in the water anyway, make sure you have a jar of urine at the ready just in case. This is Gatorade. No, it's not. All joking aside, rubbing sand and seawater in the stings and then treating them with vinegar is actually what works best. Next up, Lanakai Beach. Arguably the most beautiful beach on the island, powdery sand leads to aquamarine water while just offshore a few small islands rise above the horizon. It is truly picturesque. The only drawback is that it gets kind of crowded and parking can be tricky. Continuing our tour of the windward side, up the coast a ways is the incredible Kahana Bay Beach Park. This crescent beach just south of Punalu'u is where dreams are born. When my sister and I first arrived here as kids, I turned to her and said, Meg, this is where I'm gonna get married. And she knew I meant it. Didn't happen in the end, as evident by my Tinder profile. But the beach is still just as alluring and poetic. Camping is also available, and you can hike to the top of Lionhead for some spectacular views. Moving along to the North Shore, we arrive at Waimea Bay. This is the spot where big wave surfing was invented, and it's still the site of the annual surfing competition every winter. But during the summer months, the waves disappear almost completely, making this one of the best swimming beaches on the island. It's a perfect place to relax, backflip off a rock, and try to remember everything you did last night in your Waikiki bender. Again, parking here can be a pain in the ass. You'll likely need to park up the hill and walk down to the beach. Next, just down the road from Waimea Bay lies Sunset Beach. Another surfer haven, try your hand at one of the great pipelines in the world, or during the summer months, just stare out at the beautiful beach and chill. Next up, Makapu'u Beach. An awesome little beach sandwiched by cliffs on either side. This is a fantastic spot for body surfing and boogie boarding. Be aware, the waves here are almost always large, so only go in if you're a competent swimmer. Moving along to the Honolulu area, my first beach recommendation is more of a local spot, the Ala Moana Beach Park. It's beautiful, it's not crowded, the water is calm, clear, wave-free due to a reef that stretches across the entire protected lagoon. It's a great place to swim, have a picnic, and it's only about a 10 minute walk from Waikiki. And finally, of course, we hit quite possibly the most famous beach in the world, Waikiki. Though not my favorite beach on Oahu, on any trip to Honolulu, you just have to include it. And if you can look past the seas of tourists, this is actually a spectacular beach. With long stretches of white sand, clear waters great for beginner surfers, with the peak of Diamond Head rising grandly in the background. 
Tip number two, getting around and where to stay. Unless you plan on spending your entire vacation in central Waikiki, which is very walkable, the only real way to get around Oahu is by car. There are public buses, but car rentals are reasonably affordable. I get a car on Priceline for around $40 a day. Just be prepared to deal with the Honolulu traffic. But once you get outside the city, the traffic does subside. As for places to stay, Hawaii is not cheap. Beautiful oceanside resorts will cost you anywhere from three to $700, but there are some great budget options to be found. It may take some digging around in your typical hotel apps. As an example, I paid about 150 a night for the charming coconut Waikiki. There's also the condo rental option, like Verbo, or however the hell you say that, or Airbnb. I've seen rates on condo rentals for as cheap as about 80 bucks. And if those are still too expensive, there's always the hostel route. My two favorites are the Seaside Hawaiian Hostel and the Beach Waikiki Boutique Hostel. Tip number three, where to eat. And if you stick to the more local spots, you will be rewarded with food you will be dreaming about long after your Hawaiian vacation ends. First up, the Malasadas at Leonard's Bakery. I travel the world eating incredible things and this is the perfect example of making food a priority. Malasadas are basically Portuguese donuts, but to merely call them a donut would be akin to calling a Rembrandt a finger painting. Perfect puffy pieces of dough are fried to order, then sprinkled with a little sugar, and that's it. Resplendent in their simplicity, chewy, light, fluffy, sweet, but not too sweet, and piping hot. There are many options, some stuffed with different flavors of cream, but I always stick with the original. Why mess with perfection? Order them fresh and eat them right there in the parking lot. They are best eaten right away. If you have enough room after Malasada, Try the sweet pau doce bread stuffed with spicy Portuguese sausage. They're just plain brilliant. Now what do you say? Have I overhyped this place enough? Great. Moving along. Helena's Hawaiian Food. If there is one more do not miss this restaurant on my list, this is it. This little James Beard award-winning restaurant is probably the best example of traditional Hawaiian food you can find. I recommend getting Menu D for a little taste of everything. The salmon is fresh and delicious, the Kalua pork is the stuff of legends, and the short ribs are the best I've ever had. Maybe one of the best things I've ever had anywhere. This place is just special. Another special place, Giovanni's Shrimp Truck. Located in Kahuku on the North Shore of Oahu, this is my sister's favorite place to eat in the world, and I can't blame her. A simple roadside seafood dive, this food truck is so good it will change your friggin' religion to shrimp eating ism. They only have four things on the menu, but I come for the shrimp scampi. A dozen unpeeled prawns sauteed with mounds of freshly chopped garlic and lemon butter, then piled high on white rice with even more garlic. This plate of shrimp would be very high on my consideration for my last meal. The North Shore is littered with shrimp trucks, but Giovanni's is my favorite. Up next, Kono's. Places like Kono's remind me of why Oahu is truly a foodie paradise. There are three locations in Honolulu, Kailua, and Haleiwa, and they have some of the best Kalua pork on the island. My favorite thing on the menu is the old school pig sandwich. Delicious Kalua pork piled on perfect bread and smothered in an insane tangy guava barbecue sauce. The breakfast burritos are also amazing, and don't forget to try one of their delicious milkshakes. My favorite thing about this restaurant, if you're willing to get their logo tattooed on your body, Body, you get half off meals for life, only in Hawaii. The next restaurant is the Pig and the Lady. Located in the super charming Chinatown, this is some of the best Vietnamese food I've had anywhere, including Vietnam. The pho is incredible, but I come for the banh mi French dip. 12 hour melt in your mouth roasted brisket on an equally crispy and soft roll with a basil chimichurri sauce and a little bowl of pho au jus for dipping. I dare you to find a better sandwich in the country. Up next, the ubiquitous plate lunch, one of Hawaii's most famous food offerings. A plate of meat, rice, and mac salad. There are probably hundreds of spots dotting the island, but my absolute favorite place is Diamond Head Market and Grill. Their mac potato salad is a work of art and their ginger wasabi salmon plate is what keeps me coming back year after year. Order from the window, pull up a little piece of picnic table, and chow down under the shadow of Diamond Head Crater. Also, the market next door makes utterly delicious desserts. Another Hawaiian staple, poke. And I have a few favorite spots. Ahi Assassins is a hole-in-the-wall joint on the second floor of what looks to be an apartment complex that serves up fish so fresh, I literally watched them bring it in and carve it up. Next, Ono Seafood. 
Another simple little joint, there is nothing simple about the delicious flavor packed into their poke. There will be a line for this place, but it is worth it. Another amazing spot is called Maguro Brothers in the Kekaulike Market in Chinatown. Their poke is simple, beyond flavorful, and perfect. Lastly, and this may surprise you, the poke at the grocery store Foodland is shockingly fresh and delicious. And finally, no trip to Hawaii would be complete without indulging in some shave ice. Also, remember, it's shave ice, not shave dice. Don't be that tourist. First, Matsumoto's in Haleiwa. This place is by far the most famous shave ice shop in Hawaii. Is it delicious? Absolutely. Is it the best on the island? No. But if you're already on the North Shore, Matsumoto's is still an excellent place to get your shave ice fix. Just know you may be waiting in a Disneyland size line to get it. Next, Coconut Shave Ice. In the Hawaii Kai Marina Strip Mall sits my second favorite shave ice spot on the island. The shave ice here is delicious, plus it's frequented by Obama. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Finally, Wyola Shave Ice. This is far and away the best shave ice of Oahu. The texture of the snow is so light and fluffy, it melts in your mouth and the flavored syrups are sweet and delicious. I know Matsumoto gets all the glory, but this is pure sugary heaven. Tip number four, hit the flea market at Aloha Stadium. This is one of the coolest things you can do on Oahu. Every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday outside the Aloha Stadium, the largest open air market in Hawaii springs up. With over 400 stalls, this is the perfect place to do all your souvenir shopping. Get beautifully handcrafted art, clothes, crafts, and even book tours at a significantly lower cost than what you'll pay at the shops in Waikiki. Tip number five, go snorkeling in Hanama Bay. This one comes with a caveat. Large crowds have changed this place into a major tourist attraction. However, it's still one of the best places on the island to see the local marine life. A good tip, the park is closed on Tuesdays, so if you want the clearest water, show up first thing in the morning on Wednesday. Also, parking can be almost impossible, so either get there before the park opens at 6 a.m. or wait until the afternoon when it clears up a bit. The busiest time is around 8 a.m. If you want the snorkel experience without the frills, Shark's Cove on the North Shore is another great spot. And if you're into snorkeling, tip number six, take it a step further and go scuba diving. Oahu has some excellent diving, particularly its wreck dives, like the fantastic World War II Corsair plane that was ditched in the ocean in 1946. Also, diving gives you a great chance to see these beauties up close and personal. Majestic and beautiful, the Hawaiian sea turtles never cease to thrill me. Just look at that cute little guy. My favorite dive shop on the island is Reef Pirate Divers. They limit their dives to six divers. They go out early in the morning before the other dive shops so you have the sights to yourself and the staff is knowledgeable and awesome. That was Crash. He has better abs than I do. And if you're not certified to dive, what are you waiting for? Nothing better in the world. I could scuba dive every day of my life and it would not be a wasted life. Just remember, there are two kinds of divers. Those who pee in their wetsuits and those who lie about it. Tip number seven, take a hike. Oahu has some wonderful hikes with stunning views. Here are my four favorites. First, the hike to the top of the iconic Diamond Head Peak is one of the easiest and certainly the most popular. The views from the top are amazing, but it can get congested with tourists, so I recommend going after 4 p.m. Note the last hike is at 4.30. Next, the hike to the Makapu'u Lighthouse. We used to do this hike as kids when it was just a little dirt trail, then Obama did it and they were like, ooh, maybe we should make this a thing, so now it's actually like an official paved path. It's a very easy hike for all ages, really more of an uphill walk and the view at the top is one of my favorites on the island. Third, the Lanakai Pillbox Hike. This hike offers breathtaking views of the famous Lanakai Beach. The first part is a bit of a scramble, but then it levels off to a moderately easy ridge line to the top. This hike is best done at dawn or dusk, of which I have no footage because that's not when I filmed it. Hey, do as I say, not as I do. Lastly, for the aerobically inclined, the hike to the top of Cocoa Head Crater is probably my favorite on the island. You climb up a set of derelict railroad tracks that used to carry supplies to the top of the mountain. This hike is by far the most strenuous of the bunch. Oh, this hike, good for the lungs, bad for the breathing. I just got stopped by some people on the road that said I'm only a quarter of the way there. 
<laughs> but the view from the top of Hanama Bay and Honolulu are absolutely worth the 27,000 steps to the top. Still feels like 27,000. There is one slightly scary spot if you're afraid of heights like I am, where you have to traverse a stretch of train tracks that are open to a drop off below, but there is an easy way around. But I challenge you to do it. I did and I was totally fine. Oh God, 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 oh God. Tip number eight, get blown away at the Polly Lookout. If you want the epic views without the effort of the hike, this is the spot for you. Just off the Pali Highway between Honolulu and Kailua, the Overlook grants spectacular views of the windward side of Oahu. It's said that King Kamehameha threw his enemies off the top of this lookout to die over a thousand feet below. And while I would advise against following in his footsteps mostly for moral and legal reasons, the trade winds at the lookout can get so strong on some days you can actually lean into the wind and let it hold almost all of your weight. It's a pretty awesome experience. Tip number nine, visit historic Pearl Harbor. The infamous site of the attack of Pearl Harbor in 1941 that led to the entry of the United States into World War II, this is a must see when visiting Oahu. A fascinating piece of history. It is a sobering and powerful experience. They have a monument built over the water directly above the USS Arizona, which still lies on the ocean floor like a ghost ship. Look down at the sunken battleship, remember the sailors and soldiers who lost their lives that day, and let yourself feel whatever it is you feel. Also make sure to visit the USS Missouri or Mighty Mo, famous for the surrender of the Japanese that effectively ended World War II. This is a captivating piece of history that is not to be missed. Tip number 10, have fun at the Halona Blowhole. Located on the southeastern shore of Oahu, the blowhole is a natural lava tube carved in the lava rocks of the shore. When the waves hit the shore, water is forced up through the lava tube to an opening in the rocks on the surface, and the viewers are greeted with a spray of water that can reach heights of over 30 feet in the air. Think of it as a tiny old faithful, but with a better backdrop. Also right next to the blowhole is one of my favorite slightly secret beaches on the island. Just head down the steps to the right of the parking lot as you're facing it to be greeted by a gorgeous cove famous as the beach scene in From Here to Eternity. Tip number 11, check out the beautiful Waimea Valley and Falls. Anyone who's seen the TV show Lost will recognize this waterfall. Tucked away in a beautiful park just inland from the famous Waimea Bay, this park is quite touristy and $16 to boot, but an undeniably beautiful spot to see some of Hawaii's colorful foliage. Plus, you can actually swim in the falls, albeit with the requirement of wearing a life jacket. So touristy, yes, but still a blast, definitely. Tip number 12, rent a car, get out of Honolulu, drive around the island, and experience the many wonderful neighborhoods that make up Oahu. Make sure to hit Kailua, a charming town with shops and restaurants. Don't miss the farmer's market every Thursday evening. It's super local, neighborhoody, family friendly, and just an all around great way to spend an evening. Another great neighborhood is Kaneohe. More rural and framed by lush, jagged mountains, a must see is the gorgeous, peaceful, and totally free botanical gardens and the incredible Valley of the Temples. As you wind your way northward, you can stop by the Kualoa Ranch, famous as the backdrop for many shows and movies, including Jurassic Park, and you can kayak out to Mokoli'i Island, locally known as Chinaman's Hat. Finally, explore Oahu's North Shore. Make sure to stop in Kahuku for the best fresh fruit on the island. The Kahuku papayas are my particular favorite, and end your drive in the historic town of Haleiwa, a surfer's haven during winter, but a charming town year round. To me, these towns truly represent what Oahu is. This is where you feel the local vibe. And as much as Honolulu has changed over the years, the windward side and the North Shore have still largely retained their relaxed and local feel. And finally, of course, we come back to Waikiki. Packed with tourists and luxury brand stores, this is admittedly not my favorite part of the island. That being said, Waikiki is certainly not without its charms. There's the wonderful local art display along the fence outside the zoo on Saturdays and Sundays, the daily street market on Duke's Lane, the lagoon in front of the Hilton, the Alawai Canal is one of the more beautiful fixtures of any city in the country, and Waikiki Beach itself, while incredibly busy, is undeniably picturesque. It's also a fun place to experience some vibrant 
nightlife, take in some excellent street performing, have a Mai Tai or seven, and shop till you drop. Just please don't make this the only part of Oahu you see. The island of Oahu certainly has changed a lot since the early 1980s, but even with all its changes, every time I visit Oahu, it feels like coming home. The island has truly spectacular scenery, pristine beaches, lush jungles, and hands down the best food in the Hawaiian Islands. Come here, relax, eat, play, and experience the friendly aloha spirit of Oahu. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure to spank that subscribe button. Just, I'm gonna stop doing that. Also, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Also, like with all these videos, I realize these are just my personal favorite spots in Oahu, so if you have any suggestions, please throw them in the comments section. I always love to hear from you. One final shout out to Rhino Camera Gear for helping me out with some awesome new equipment. Thanks so much, I'll see you soon from somewhere else in the world.